The new year is right around the corner and the winter season is starting to settle in. December is one of the slowest months for me, so I try to embrace the different pace before everything starts to gear up again. As I get older, I realize how much I need this time of year to reset and recharge, and I love spending time dabbling in other hobbies I don't have as much time for during other parts of the year. The next few weeks, I'll be spending more time baking and crafting as our days get darker and the holidays get closer. Honestly, I can't wait to cozy up and enjoy the slowness life has to offer this time of year. So I'm making burgers tonight and I typically make these burger buns, but I only do a batch and I freeze about half the batch and then I have some burger buns in the freezer for whenever I want to make burgers or like any type of sandwiches. And I really want to get better about doing more batches like this, like more bulk batches, because this is double the recipe. I was going to triple it and then I'm really glad I didn't because I wouldn't have been able to bake them all at the same time. I think the amount I did was honestly pretty perfect, but these sit so well in the freezer. They are so good. I love these buns. It's a recipe from Joshua Wiseman. I'll link it down below for you guys. I don't have a vacuum sealer or anything, but when I go to package up the buns, I try to get out as much of the air as I possibly can with a straw before I put them into the freezer. I was thinking I was coming outside and it was going to be nice. And I think I missed the nice window. It was 65 degrees today and the wind is absolutely crazy but whenever it's warm like this i try to make sure even if it's not time to get the chicken coop clean because for instance we have i think just a whole seven days of cold coming so this is going to be something i'm not going to want to spend as much time on so i'm going to try to get this done real quickly switch out their bedding give them a dose of probiotics in their water Have a stack of clothes here that i'm going to dye today um i love black and i love all of the clothes that i have right here it's just they are very faded and look a little dated since they're faded so i have this like really cool crew necky sweatshirt and the problem with this is i haven't worn it in a while but i still like it but i hate that the neckline on it is faded the cuffing on it's faded and then there's this side paneling here that really faded out the body of it's fine but this is actually supposed to be pretty dyeable from the components. So I'm hoping that I can get that evened out today and it can be something I can enjoy wearing. I have these pair of pants. I only have a few pair of pants and I really love black jeans. These Levi's were really good and then they just started to really fade out. I think I've had these now for a minimum of two years as well. So just to kind of update things, favorite sweaters, um, and then these overalls. I like these overalls, um, but they looked more black when they were on the website. And I still like them, but I think I would like them better if they were more solid black. So I'm gonna try to get these to look more black today as well. Okay, so instructions stay to have water 140 and greater. I'm currently heating up six gallons here and it's sitting at 140. So I'm gonna let it go just a little bit longer because it also states don't let it go too long. And then I'm going to actually take this into the basement and dye everything uh, down there. I'm not gonna use my good stock pot. This is just for heating up water. <laughs> Okay, I'm really happy about the sweater. This is one of those things I wear in the spring, fall, winter. It's a great little layering piece. Even like in some of the colder mornings of the summer, this is literally my favorite sweater that I've had for a few years. And it looks so 
good. So I am so happy about it. The jeans could have been just a little bit darker, but overall, um, I'm pretty happy with uh, how they look. You can see that the paneling still is like a different color, but this was never like the same color black when I first bought it. But, oh, the fact that this was a $7 fix is really great. I don't think I'm gonna be that excited about the overalls. Um, but I am excited about these last three. Yeah, I really wish the overalls would have turned out darker. I wasn't sure about these ones going into it because it doesn't have hemp listed on the dye and these are majority hemp and cotton and something else, which I think is a synthetic um, material. And my other stuff was majority cotton based. So I was thinking that this may not take, I'm sure it is like a little bit darker, but overall it still has that very like grayish tone to it. Again, I don't hate it. These fit really nice, but I still want them to be a little bit more black. All right, so I'm going to do some freeze drying of some fruit. Using frozen fruit makes it that much easier because it's pretty much already cut up and you just have to put it on the tray and then the dry time is less since it's already frozen. So I am gonna go through and cut the strawberries in half but the peaches are already in slices and I'm gonna get this in the freeze dryer. Um, for some Christmas gifts. Everyone loves freeze dried fruit. I know I have became such a fan over the last year and it's so easy, especially with frozen fruit. So I'm going to make up some of these trays real quick and go put them in the freeze dryer. Ooh, these peaches are a little big. So to make sure everything freeze dries at like the same rate, I'm gonna kind of slice them. Slicing any type of fruit while it's still frozen is actually pretty easy. So this really isn't too bad. I'm definitely running into some problems when it comes to garden planning this year. So I need to get onions started in about three weeks time. And the onions I grew last year, I cannot get my hands on. I even contacted the one seed company because they say they're out of stock and they say they're not getting these seeds until probably end of February at this point. And for intermediate onions, I have found that I can't find many storage varieties. The onion I grew last year was called Calibra and it had a six month plus like ish, depending on like conditions and everything, storage time. And that's done really well for me. At this point, we are like a few weeks away from six months of harvesting and I still have some onions downstairs. They've held up really good. I've used almost all of them. It's been great. Like I really enjoyed these onions. They had a really good flavor. They weren't like super strong oniony, but they also weren't super sweet. They were a really good middle ground and they just worked really well for everything. So I did, what did they end up? Cause I did end up um, emailing the one company uh, and was like, hey, so are you guys gonna restock these? And they actually suggested another onion variety that will that is currently in stock. What was it called? Elsie, the Elsie onion, which is a, I believe it's also um, a hybrid, just like the Calibra is, but I really, really, really need to find an onion variety pretty soon. A lot of the ones I keep finding for my area really only store for a three to four month period, which is about half of what I currently just dealt with. So I would have to be processing a lot more onions toward the end of the summer, beginning of fall, or I need to plant less onions and I can't really make up my mind yet. The other thing I'm like currently running into is just wanting to do more than I physically can in my space. So I'm really having to prioritize. I went through all of my seeds 
and took out all of my empties from the year. And then I kind of mixed everything up between things I would want to grow and things that I wouldn't touch again, or things that I'm just not going to bother with this year because I need to devote space toward a few other things. So one of my goals is to always have like a year's worth of tomato products. And I definitely need to have more tomatoes going. And I also need to change the, lo the location of the tomatoes. At least I want to change the location of the tomatoes this year. So that frees up my entire in-ground space. But I don't know if I want to plant my onions in in-ground space or if I want to use my in-ground space for something like potatoes. There's just a lot of like little things I really need to figure out in the next few weeks because I do need to get seeds ordered Um, because I need to get the onion seeds. I probably could just order onions by themselves and deal with other stuff, but I'm currently out of a lot. I don't have any tomatoes outside of San Morzano's. Um, I really need a determinate paste tomato. That's another thing I'm really having trouble finding is I really like determinate plants I li or like a semi-determinate. So I'm looking for like a semi-determinate or determinate paste variety. And I'm like on the teeter with a few. I ended up going on our um, agriculture extension office and I was looking up different varieties they suggest for Kansas if you're unsure of like where to go that's like a really good guide that I started to follow over the last few years is to find varieties that have shown to work really well or grow really well in Kansas so I can't remember the two varieties but I have them marked on my other computer for determinants so I might have tomatoes already kind of figured out but the other thing I'm currently doing is I'm playing around with the idea of adding two more trellises on my trellis tunnel. If I do that, that gives me a whole stretch to be able to grow a ton of green beans because this year another thing I'm planning on doing differently is doing all pole beans and no bush beans. I really want to get my beans planted right when I can get things like direct sowed in the ground because the one thing I've been running into over the last few years is my game plan for green beans was to always plant them after a crop, which would be great if our summers weren't getting just so extremely hot. So before the last two years, I kind of just planted everything at once and my green beans thrived when I planted them like during that May time period. So I really want to get them in the ground. I really want to do all pool varieties. That way they can continue to produce and they can kind of take up less space than a garden bed because I would have to devote probably about four or more garden beds for bush beans and I just don't really have all of that. I pretty much already have three full garden beds complete. Three and a half garden beds are already completely planted for next year because I have a whole bed of strawberries, but I'm still teetering on if I want to grow loofah or not. I really don't think I am. I will probably end up doing some type of squash again. I've done honey nut and I think I might do honey nut again, but I'm debating on taking a year off of squash because I really just don't feel like dealing with squash bugs. Lufa, on the other hand, I feel like I'm going to have enough lufa. I just really love the vine. So again, I'm just trying to really figure out right now exactly what I want to plant. And I need to get those little things figured out. So when it comes to garden planting, though, I love using the drawing app on my iPad called Procreate because it allows me to have multiple layers. So I actually drew this on my iPad last year. And this was taken from a picture of one I made out of cardboard before I had an iPad. So if I eliminate all of these layers, you can see the picture I have. You can see my red shaggy carpet from the basement. But I literally used a piece of car, oop. But I literally used a piece of cardboard and I went outside, measured everything out. And then I create, and then I printed off like big, like, blocked paper online to where every block was an inch and I literally made garden beds I had tape on everything and I would mix match different things and if you're having a hard time visualizing your space I definitely suggest like getting some graph paper really measuring out your space see if you can add any more than what you really think okay I'm not sure where I got cut off but I'm running out of room on my camera either way before I go if you guys have any tried and true varieties that you think I should try, please leave those names down below. I'd love to check them out. And if you live in the Midwest and you've had some tried and true ones that you really enjoy, please let me know those. That's really important just because you're a little bit more regional. But as always, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me this week. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye.